chose three probably they're a bit random or not connected to each other, but when you hear me talk, you don't understand why. Um, the first one that I chose is a screenshot from Second Life, which is a virtual reality game. Uh, it's uh, very blurry, like yours. <laughs> um, but I believe that with the development of social networks and um, uh, social media, more and more education is going to be online and the learning process will be online. And a very good example for that is Coursera and EDX that offer online courses. Um, it's uh, more comfortable to sit on your couch and watch a course and to learn something new rather than going for 10, 15 kilometers to a school to get that education. But of course, here we're talking about the Northern Hemisphere where it's easier for me to do it online, but if we're talking about the Southern Hemisphere, then it's a bit difficult with the connectivity. Uh, but we're not talking implementation right now, we're talking about the future. I believe that this is the actual future of education. Now, um, of course, education, besides uh, making it or making it happen online, it has to be fun. That's how I always believed that learning should be. It should be fun. It shouldn't be restricted to four walls, uh, a grumpy teacher. So my uh, second picture is, is um, uh, Google Glass, which is a concept from Google that they were started developing publicly for about a year already. And it's basically just a pair of glasses that you put, like glasses, and um, it, it has a small screen and you can get, uh, you can record video, take pictures and so on. Of course, that's the early development stage. But I believe that with the future of mobile technology, uh, this is pretty much what the way, the, the direction that mobile technology and connectivity is going to. Um, it's, um, it's also part of the process being fun. And um, as I was saying earlier, um, you can actually look at things and then you can learn new things about those things. So if you look at a chair, for example, it can give you the components of the chair, like aluminum, wood, uh, whatever, and it can give you the source of that, that component, and then you can know something about that country, and so on. And um, yeah, that's the way I see it in the next five to 10 years. Uh, no mobile phones, no batteries to worry about. That's pretty much how it goes. And of course, if we talk in perspective, then you can recharge this thing with sweat, for example, or with, uh, with the steps that you're taking, and then it recharges, and then you don't have to worry about recharging it. Now, the third picture, that's a bit interesting. Uh, and at this point in time, I don't even know why I took it. But um, it's, it's pretty much... The way I saw it, and the, the, the reason why I, I picked it up, is um, pretty much reusable technology. This device, the way I was envisioning it when I picked it up, is that you can probably, uh, for example, attach it to a plant, or put it in the soil, and then it can send you information about the crops and how is everything going. Or you can put it as an earring on a cow, and then it will tell you the blood pressure, the heart, whatever, what not. Uh, you can also put it, for example, in the fridge, and then it, gets, it can sense the smells or the odors in the fridge, and it can send you a message telling you that the milk is, is not good anymore, and so on. We need that. So, yeah, the, the, the re I mean, for now you have a mobile phone, indeed, you can do several things with it, software-wise, but in terms of hardware, you, after a while you can put it as a doorstop, but that's pretty much it. And that's the way I see reusable technology, that you can use the same device for a, a, a range of stuff that you can do. And also, it's good for educational purposes, not only in, in functional uh, stuff or situations. That's me. Okay, great. Thanks.